Right, looks like we lost connection for a second there, but <clears throat> we ended with that and our viewfinder. Viewfinder is going to be helpful for isolating areas of the image so that you can <clears throat> make sure you're only looking at one square at a time, not getting distracted by the full picture. But with this grid, you're going to need something to reference. So hopefully you've got a reference printed out. Say I've got something like this. Now, we've got eight and a half by 11 paper here, and we had eight and a half by 11 paper here. So I want to be figuring out where I want my six inch by six inch square. So if I'm doing that, I can kind of be eyeballing it. Now, it's easiest if you've got a corner that you can work with. That way you can just measure six inches and six inches, connect those and everything, and you should be good. But if I say I wanted to have it centered on this eye, it's a raven, <coughs> um, but say I want it a little bit weirder and so that you can't see the beak as much. If I wanted it centered on the eye, put that in the center, <coughs> and then I can take my marker. I'm just going to hover it over here and then I'm going to slide that out and put a mark here. Now that mark is a little bit unclear. Fortunately, pencil does have a slightly reflective quality. So we're going to use that and make an X there. <clears throat> now we're going to take that and measure how far it is. I'm trying to keep it straight with the paper. So that is close to an inch and a half, but to be a little bit more precise, I'm gonna flip it over and measure in centimeters. That's looking like three and a half centimeters. And I'm going to put it at three and a half centimeters so that it's easier to reference. If you're working with weird numbers the whole time, you're gonna end up screwing yourself up. So for just this part, I'm going to get that three and a half centimeters. It doesn't really matter where your tick mark is anymore because you're gonna be using these. Three and a half. Remember, this is sort of based on wherever you decided you wanted to put your six inch by six inch square. So I've got those tick marks now. And I can come across and get them lined up. Just like that. There we go. Now from there, I'm going to switch back to inches. I'm going to come down six inches. This part I'm working on is a little bit grayer, so I'm going to see that marker show up a little bit more. So I'll switch over to that. Come over here, same thing, six inches. use this. I want to kind of keep my six inches as a reference, so starting at zero, ending right there, and eyeball where I want to see my image. The other thing I can do is see if it matches up nicely. Um, if I start at one inch away, I'm going to end up with that, which looks pretty good. So I'm just going to move that over and I'm going to use from the edge of the paper and I'm going to make tick marks at every inch. We're getting a little bit back into the color thickness, so I'm going to switch back to the silvery pencil that I can see better. And 
awkwardly maneuvering around the tripod. <clears throat> so I'm gonna come over here, just so I get a little bit easier time with it. This is again back in the um, clearer area. So I'm gonna make these. There we go. And because I was working one inch away, I'm going to be, see, there we go. That's why I did it from the start there. I gotta hit that one inch again. So I can see it in the graphite. There we go. So. Now the second one, I did switch to graphite so I can see that. Match those up. Graphite. I was controlling the lighting here, so if I had overhead lighting, I'd probably be able to see the graphite better, but I'd also have the shadow of the camera just to reveal a little of the movie magic. There we go. And there we go. There it is. All right, got them in this little bird cage. Again, you have to decide if you want to use graphite or marker, depending on how things are gonna show up on your image. I might take this line and reinforce it with graphite. Generally, you're gonna be able to see, if you wanna do marker on the bottom and graphite on the top, just the top layer of graphite, that can sometimes help. There we go, I can see that better. <coughs> Stick with the graphite here as I make my tick marks. Add every inch. That's good. Don't need the sixth one. Starting at zero. Tick mark. Tick mark. Tick mark. There's benefits and drawbacks to using the uh, <clears throat> clear ruler. I like this angle a little bit better, so I'm going to turn it, match those up. I was being a little careless. There we go. Maybe I want to get into this area and I want to do both. So I'll do a marker and then a graphite. Come down here, pick up my marker, I'll do a marker, and then a graphite. Right there, I'll do my marker, and then a graphite. So you've got references, but now I have this. If I want to not distract myself, I can even come in and chop it up. And if you want to match up your values exactly, you can even take this once you start drawing and do things like fold it and put it as a reference. As long as you're willing to take time, this technique should allow you to create things pretty accurately. So say I wanted to double check, maybe cut it, maybe see what the half looks like. I'll take that middle line, I'll fold it, See, did not not do a good fold. <laughs> it's the middle though, so thankfully we can uh, try that again. There we go. That's a little bit better. 
do like that, see how the values are matching up. Again, if you're looking at, obviously you're going to focus on the eye on this one. So if you want to take that and cut out just the eye, so this was a work, that was a, a poor viewfinder. If you want to just look at the eye or just look at the square beneath it, like this, this is going to be imagery that's not going to translate well if you're not looking at if you're looking at it as what's below the raven's eye if you're looking at it like this you're kind of just looking at the values and the lines so that's the whole idea of this exercise all right that's how that's done